Hi everyone, today I will be talking about a paper learning predictive representations for deformable objects using contrastive estimation. So to get started, why deformable objects? Well, deformable objects play a crucial role in our lives and we interact with them all the time, such as folding laundry, tying our shoes, or bagging groceries. There has been a lot of prior work in solving these manipulation tasks. Recently, work has focused around using deep learning methods such as imitation learning or model-free reinforcement learning to solve these difficult cloth manipulation tasks. However, a lot of these methods require either a lot of demonstrations or are also not as sample efficient and requiring a lot of samples in simulation uh, to work correctly. So how can we address this? So to address these issues, our paper proposes using model-based learning. Using model-based learning, we can learn a general world model without a reward function and can also be more sample efficient compared to existing model-free methods. In addition, we'd like to plan in some compressed latent space since planning image space can be difficult and expensive. So to do this, we leverage contrastive learning, which has shown a lot of recent success in representation learning for images and also in model learning for rigid objects. In this paper, we show that contrastive learning models can learn strong, planable representations for deformable objects. All right, so now we get on to our core method, the contrastive forward model, or CFM for short. There are two main components to our method. The first is the image encoder, G theta, which takes in an image, OT, and outputs a latent, ZT. And also the transition dynamics, F, which takes in the latent in action at the current time step and outputs its prediction for the latent at the next time step. The third line here is the loss that we train on, which is the info NCE contrastive loss, where H is like some arbitrary similarity function. In this specific case, we use e to the minus L2 norm of the two latents. Um, and essentially, an interpretation of this loss is that we want to um, bring together the predicted z hat t plus 1 and then the positive or actual uh, next time step latent z pos t plus 1. And then we want to pull apart um, z hat t plus 1 with all the negative samples. And in this case, uh, more difficult negative samples could be states at the same trajectory but different time steps, uh, or easier negative samples could be just arbitrary states from different trajectories inside of our data set. So the process for planning and evaluating our model is very simple. We use one step MPC, uh, where given some goal state, in this case a flattened rope, uh, we encode the current and the goal state into the ZT and ZG, uh, and then we sample a bunch of different actions, uh, run them through our dynamics model, uh, which outputs different predicted z hat t plus 1 for actions 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in this case, we choose the action that corresponds to the um, resulting predict predicted z that is closest to zg. Uh, we execute the action and we repeat. And here we show some extra simulation results from our simulation experiments. Um, on the top row, we have some actual planning trajectories uh, with different given goal states. Uh, for rope and different cloth tasks. Uh, for rope, we have different goals, and for cloth, we have uh, the same cloth spreading, but for different colored cloths. Uh, and below that, we have some example of quantitative evaluations, showing that our method does indeed work a lot better than the other baselines, um, both in performance and planning, and also generalization to different goal states. And here we have an example of a real robot trajectory for rope manipulation. In real time, this takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And here we show some extra rope trajectories with different goal states. And next we have an example of an actual cloth trajectory. And once again, for the sake of time, the video is significantly sped up. Uh, in practice, this will take about 20 to 30 minutes of real-world time. Uh, we found out that in practice that the actual speed is limited by the robot itself as opposed to our algorithm. And here we show some extra real robot cloth trajectories. Note that we do use the same blue cloth goal state for all tasks, showing that our latent space is more or less agnostic to the color of the cloth. And here are some more real robot quantitative evaluations showing that our method does indeed work a lot better uh, than the existing baselines. Thanks for watching.